the momentous occasion. It is our first time this season talking with John Moses, the voice of the Altoona Curve. Joining us this morning, our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. It's, as John says, a beautiful day in Curve, PA. John, good morning. Good morning. Great to be here. Well, it's gl- I'm glad you're with us here this morning as we talk Curve Baseball and get ourselves set up for a big opening weekend. Huh? Tonight is game time. Six o'clock, first pitch, and uh, looking like a pretty good team to start the year here. Man, you are loaded. You are absolutely loaded, and it's interesting that they, um, they've they not only brought up all those players from Greensboro, but they brought the guy that managed them last year. That's a great level of comfort for these fellows, isn't it? Yeah, you know, there's several members of our coaching staff that are here from Greensboro last year. You know, those grasshoppers were... Uh, Pretty good, 74 and 46, uh, you know, lost in five games in the championship series in the high A East last year. And, you know, Kyron was uh, visiting with the local media on Wednesday, and he was saying, you know, uh, some of that familiarity has really uh, helped them chemistry-wise early on, you know, just a lot of people getting back to know each other again this year and already having some of those relationships built from the year they spent together last year should help the curve get off to a good start this year. Yeah, it's a great philosophy too to keep them together as a group as they come up through uh and and just watch them play their ways uh toward the major leagues you know you get to this point the jump from class a high a uh into double a is supposedly the biggest jump and most difficult jump for ball players because they're coming up against guys who are just shy of making it uh to the big step uh in into triple a and then the majors and some guys who have already been there to the big show and uh and they're back in double a so they've got guys that have experience that they're playing against and for these young fellas to stay together as a group uh that's just a, a great a great approach i think to to putting together a system yeah and and you've seen the pirates sort of take that that uh that idea over the last couple of years you know particularly with the group that was here in altoona last year guys like mason martin and cal mitchell and o'neill cruz and rodolfo castro and Kanan smith and jigba you know wanted to keep those guys together as much as possible last year because they had developed a very good chemistry amongst each other. And, you know, you look at that Indianapolis roster to open the season. They started on Tuesday of this week, and it's the entire curve roster from a season ago. Yeah, you know, it it's, pretty much, uh, it's pretty much everybody left. <laughs> it really is. All right, so we're going to get to learn some new names this year, and, and I'm excited because you just told me who the starting pitcher is tonight. And as much as uh, I'm intrigued by the prospects of, of Quinn Priester, since they got Carmen Majewski out, uh, out, of, out of the supplemental draft, uh, I, I have been sort of zeroed in on him, targeted in on him. I think this guy has the potential to be really, really good and, and pretty fast. And that's an opinion that's shared by our pitching coach. You know, I was – chatting with Drew Bennis a little bit yesterday afternoon just to get a feel for some of the arms that are new here in Altoona this year. And his eyes just lit up when he started to talk about Majinski. Um, you know, it's a fastball that's 93 to 96, and he's got the ability to sort of run it away with the two-seam action, but also throw that standard straight four-seam action. Um, really good slider, really good changeup, and he's got a little bit of a cut fastball. But, you know, the thing that our pitching coach is so excited about is the fact that it all comes out of the same tunnel, really the same release point and the same spot. So it gets to be a little bit hard for hitters to make a determination about what's coming because you don't have the tell. You know, sometimes guys with a breaking ball might have a slightly different Mm -hmm. place. They release the ball. Um, with Majinski, that's not really the case. Everything's coming out of that same little zone. And, you know, by the time you have to make your decision about whether or not you're going to swing, you're not sure if it's going to be 96 and it's going to run in on your hands or if it's going to be an 84 mile an hour slider that darts away from your bat. Um, it's a really intriguing profile, and I'm excited to see him pitch tonight. Yeah, and the guy seems to have a good head on his shoulders, too. I um, mean, he knows the game, uh, and, and he's got a maturity about him that I like. He certainly does. And you know what I found interesting about him as I was, you know, reading about reading up on him in the off season, he doesn't have any social media accounts. He didn't even get a cell phone until he was 16 years old. (laughs) Um, You know, so he's not quite the same 22, 23 year old that you might be used to spends a lot of time on social media apps. He's just a very mature uh, individual, and I look forward to getting to know him this year. Yeah, absolutely. Priester's another one. Tanash Thompson is a guy that uh, people have been intrigued by since the Pirates got him. I think he came over from Cleveland. That staff is just loaded with arms. Uh, but, man, you take a look around the infield and the outfield, and, and, and it's become about stacked. My goodness gracious, those guys have sticks and gloves, and, and they can use them. 
Yeah, you know, there's, you know, uh, the curve last year could definitely hit, and there was some big time power. But this year, it feels like there's a little more depth on the pitching staff without losing much of that offensive punch. You know, we'll see Nick Gonzalez play every day here uh, with Lee Over Piguero. Those two guys are really intriguing young prospects, and, and they are best of friends. They're like two peas in a pod. You walk by the clubhouse. And you see uh, in Leover's locker, he's got a picture of Nick Gonzalez in his locker. Um, <laughs> those two guys are very fun together. And, you know, it's, it's good to see some familiar faces back this year. Uh, you know, guys like Matt Frazier and Jack Sawinski and Omar Cruz, who sort of emerged as the year went on last year. Carter Bins is back as the starting catcher. You know, seven returners on the opening day roster. And uh, it's, it's good to see some familiar faces to start this year. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in where Marcano fits into all of this because they've got Triolo over there at third base, too. Yeah, I think it's going to be sort of an interesting shuffle along that infield. You know, it's not uh, it's not going to be set every day. I think there's probably going to be a rotation of sorts. And, you know, Marcano is a guy that the Pirates are still very high on, even though, um, you know, he finds himself at double-A this year for the first time. Um, you know, I think they they feel like this level is the chance where he'll get sort of more regular at bats than he would a triple a so that's why he's going to open with the curve this year but yeah it's uh it's going to be a tough task for manager kyron madison and his staff when they're building out the lineup to make sure that everybody gets the at bats they need yeah so winsky of course uh, he showed us some things with the curve last year coming over from the padres another guy that uh, people were talking about with the curve this year and you know you can talk about these prospects all the time because they are they are such bright prospects. Lolo Sanchez is a guy that has intrigued a lot of people. Totally. Uh, you know, one of the best base runners in all of minor league baseball, led the system in stolen bases last year. In fact, he's done that back-to-back seasons. Um, you know, he's a guy who really started to see his power emerge last year, had a career-high 17 home runs. And, you know, I'll be interested to see how, you know, the ballpark in Altoona and, uh, you know, this league is is going to affect his power profile. But, you know, with the way he runs, if he runs into 15 or 20 home runs in a year, he could be a pretty special player. Yeah, really, really could. So those are the guys that we'll be watching and many, many more coming through Altoona. And I would say for, for some of these guys, you better see them quick because uh, they could play themselves a way up out of Altoona pretty, pretty darn quickly. Uh, but the curve experience is more than just watching the team play ball. You really make it fun at PNG Field. Sure is. You know, tonight we'll have post-game fireworks. Um, you know, you'll see throughout the season, all of our night games are going to start at 6 o'clock this year, which, you know, I think is a little more family-friendly so that, you know, the kids can enjoy more of the game before it's bedtime. Um, you know, we'll have fireworks throughout the year and just got to cross our fingers for a little bit of sunshine and uh, looking forward to some great nights at the park. Yeah, yeah. So tonight for opening night, uh, I know there are special things planned. You mentioned the fireworks and what's this about a singing painter to do the national anthem? Is that am I reading that one right? That's right, Joe Everson. He will sing the national anthem and paint at the same time uh, this beautiful portrait while he is singing the national anthem. Um, it's a sight to behold. You know, I, I caught a video of it on YouTube the other day, and it's really impressive. You know, it's, <laughs> it's an incredible talent to have to be able to do both at the same time. Wow. Wow, that is something else. What else is happening this weekend in terms of promotions? Well, we'll have Autism Awareness uh, Day on Saturday afternoon. That's a 4 o'clock first pitch. And then, you know, Sunday at 1 o'clock, we'll have uh, the Parrot, the uh, the Pirate Parrot here coming over from uh, from Pittsburgh. We'll be here for a visit. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be kind of cool to uh, to see him here this, uh, this weekend on Sunday at 1 o'clock. Yeah, well, that does sound like a lot of fun. Of course, uh, the curve... Uh, running their series this year, it, it, it's not exactly the same model as last year because you're starting on a Friday. Um, but um, curve games uh, give fans an idea of of how the schedule works this year as opposed to last year. So it's similar in that we'll play six days a week, Tuesday through Sunday. Um, usually in those series, um, they've extended the schedule. Last year we played 120 games. This year we're at 138. Um, so they add on a couple of extra series. There'll be a space for an all-star break in July that coincides with the major league all-star break, the uh, 18th to the 21st of July. Um, so we'll play three with Harrisburg this weekend, and then we'll play the other half of that series that weekend in July, the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Um, and, you know, these six game series, you know, they're sort of interesting player development opportunities and, um, 
you know, sort of uh, crossing our fingers that we get to something a little bit closer to the big league schedule for next year where they're back to three and four game sets. But, you know, having every Monday off is nice for fellas like me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, John Moses, it's good to catch up with you again, and we will be doing this each Friday, heading into each weekend series with The Curve, and appreciate your time today. Have a great one, and have a great opening weekend. Thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you at the ballpark. There's John Moses with the Altoona Curve here this morning on The Voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160 and AM 11.